hello everybody. Thanks for joining me uh, for this talk. It's a very nice and big room, and uh, <laughs> it's difficult to, you know, fill in the, this room. Um, but uh, don't hesitate to uh, interrupt me with questions, etc. I'll be happy to answer them. And don't be in intimidated by the size of the room, even if you're far away in the in the back. Okay, so what can you learn from thousands of source files on uh, GitHub? This is what we're going to cover today. Um, why am I speaking about that? Uh, I have two hats. Uh, I'm a developer advocate for the Google Cloud Platform, and I'm going to use a tool, a service called BigQuery for uh, analyzing uh, that source code. And in BigQuery, uh, we have the data set, uh, coming from GitHub. So we've got all the sources. And we can learn some interesting things there. And my other hat uh, is to be part of the uh, Apache Groovy Programming Language Project. I've been working on that project for a, a big number of years, uh, 13 years. Um, so that's why So it, I'm going to focus on Groovy source files. Uh, so you'll see lots of uh, Groovy, a bit of Gradle and Grails um, in this presentation. But the point here is more, let's say, for you to understand that you can use the same tool and approach for analyzing the code you're interested in or, or other data sets. But my uh, sample data I'm going to use, that's source files in GitHub, and in particular, Groovy, Gradle uh, kind of files. And using BigQuery, oh, I'll come back to that. So uh, when was that? Uh, last year in 2016, uh, June. Oh, it's interesting. That was the, the following day after my birthday. I, I never noticed the, the date before. <laughs> anyway, uh, so GitHub actually released. So we, 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 we were partnering with, with GitHub on that. Uh, they, they released the whole data set uh, of, of the data that's uh, stored uh, on GitHub. So it's really a big uh, archi archive of uh, data because you can easily imagine the numbers and we'll, we'll say a few things about those numbers. Uh, there are three terabytes of data over uh, 2.8 million repositories with 145 million unique commits. That's uh, Quite a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, one little remark I wanted to make. Uh, so I haven't updated the numbers uh, because I did that presentation uh, before at uh, DevOps Belgium. So I didn't update the, the numbers. So it, it might be a little bit higher than this, but you, you get the, uh, you know, the ballpark uh, kind of figures. That's really big figures, obviously. Big numbers. Uh, over those Source files, you've got 2 billion file paths and the content of the latest revision of 163 million files. So you don't have, when I say the, the whole GitHub data set, you don't have all the revisions of each and every file, but at least you've got the latest revision and that's what you uh, want to analyze. At least that's what I want to analyze in this presentation. So it's pretty big, all right. Uh, speaking of BigQuery, uh, BigQuery is Google's solution for uh, the, its uh, big uh, data warehouse solution uh, for uh, analysis. Um, what's interesting with uh, BigQuery is that uh, it's a service, so there's no infrastructure uh, to set up, to manage, to provision, or anything like this. And to analyze uh, what, what's stored in BigQuery, you can use SQL. And usually, uh, pretty much everybody is familiar with SQL. Yeah. Uh, the sole thing, uh, I would say perhaps a disadvantage, I don't know, uh, is that I suck at SQL. <laughs> so it, it, I always spend, spend a lot of time preparing my queries because um, uh, I don't know why, but SQL and myself, we have never really been friends. Uh, you can go through terabytes of data in minutes or seconds even. Uh, that, that's pretty impressive. So imagine a database and you do a, a full table scan but across millions and billions of rows. 
SQL, uh, you can use SQL, so it's pretty simple uh, to use. You can go even, it, it scales from bytes to petabytes, so there's really huge uh, um, data stored there, and it's been used also internally by, uh, by Google itself uh, for, for its uh, data warehousing uh, needs. Um, no capex, yeah, because it's always on. It's uh, it's a service you can use. Uh, there are some interesting uh, interactions you can do with other tools like Tableau, R, Python, etc. And you also have, as part of the uh, the free tier, you also have one terabyte, which is free. So you can use that uh, that free tier uh, to play with the, this uh, this system. Uh, BigQuery is actually internally uh, called Dremel, um, and this was also the name of a paper that was published in uh, 2012. Uh, no, when was the date? Yeah, I guess that's 2012. Um, and uh, it's really used internally to uh, process exabytes every month. I don't even remember how many zeros there are in exabytes. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I'm going to look at the Groovy source code. Who's familiar with Groovy? OK, nice. Let's say half, half of you. So just a, a few words. So Groovy is a, a JVM language uh, that we say it's multifaceted language in the sense that uh, you can use it in a dynamic fashion or in a statically typed fashion. It supports optional typing as well as uh, when you use the, the, the static compiler, uh, you can use you can take advantage of uh, type inferencing, and in terms of syntax, it's pretty close to Java, and we kind of uh, uh, circled around Java to add more shortcuts, etc., to make developers more productive. Um, and it's great fit for uh, things like domain-specific languages, so that's why it's used in things like uh, Gradle to define the, the structure uh, decla de declaratively for, for your builds, uh, and well, other interesting features for functional programming and so on. So if I want to analyze the Groovy source code, what kind of question I could ask? Um, so how many Groovy files are there on GitHub, or uh, what are the most popular uh, imports or packages used, et cetera? So that's the kind of questions I'm going to ask. So uh, let's dive into the demo. Uh, yeah, or perhaps, yeah, before the demo, I'm just going to uh, show you something. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I know what I'm going to do. So here's the, uh, the interface uh, of Google BigQuery. Uh, so let me try, uh, so uh, I'd like to show you, uh, there are various uh, big data, uh, data sets which are available on things like baseball, so the Git rep repository, uh, news from Hacker News, and also uh, something, but I'm, that I'm not going to show that in action, but you can even do joins across different data sets. So you could look at, let's say, what people are saying on Hacker News on a particular project on GitHub, and you could even do joins across those uh, big data sets. And uh, the one I'm using, yeah, it's the, the, the ones from the, the GitHub repositories. So you've got commits, the list of commits, the contents of the file, the list of files, the different programming languages as well, the licenses being used, uh, etc. And also, if you want to play with that data set, uh, notice that there are samples of those other tables. These are the tables in, 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 in that, um, uh, in that uh, data set. So these are the columns which are available. Uh, because as the data set is pretty big, uh, if you don't want to run out of uh, your free quota, your uh, one terabyte per month, uh, you can test on the sample data rather than the, the big uh, data set, the full data set. So what I did in order, so uh, as I'm using my own Google account, I don't really pay for <laughs> the, 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 the time that's being spent by the servers behind the scenes. But uh, in order to uh, make my queries even faster, I did an extract of just the files that, are, that I was interested in. 
So that's what I was uh, going to show here. So I used the, the BigQuery uh, the BigQuery data set, and then I only took the uh, dot .groovy files, and I've put that in my own personal data sets. Uh, so I did the same with the Gradle build files, and I think there's was, yeah. And also, as I wanted to have a look at the Gradle versions being used in the wild, I also looked at some particular properties files. So let's start. So um, uh, as I said, the figures are perhaps not up to date because they are at least six months old. Uh, but how many Groovy files are there in, uh, in GitHub? So it's a very simple select, count, star from the list of files, from the tables uh, of outputs. Oh, uh, so when I switch, you saw the answer already. Uh, you can, uh, something interesting, you can save queries. So these are the, the past queries that I ran. And here are some of the queries that I'm going to run. So here I can do, and is it uh, visible and readable enough in the, in the back? Yeah? A little bit bigger? No, perfect? Okay, good. Yeah, it's difficult to hear from, from here. Okay. So here, select count over uh, the, 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 the list of files. And if I run that, uh, so it's pretty quick. And uh, so I run the query. Where's the, that's perhaps because it's too big. Where is that? Run. Perhaps because I increased the, the size, yeah, it's here. So here you've got the result below. So there are uh, less than a le le uh, less than a million files, uh, Groovy files on GitHub. Groovy files. All right. What else could I ask then? Um, what are the most frequent Groovy file names? Uh, sometimes you know you use uh, different. Uh, I mean there are there are common class names that come up. Uh, are there some particular ones which are really used way more than others? And for this one, that was a bit surprising, actually. Uh, so this is query history, saved queries. I'm going to run my second query, which is here. I'm going to edit it. So I just took the, uh, the 24 biggest ones. Uh, as file name, and then again I count uh, the ones I find. So this time I used a, a nested query. So I, I, I select from um, all, the, uh, all the all the files. I look at the, the the last part of the path to extract just the file name, and then I'm I'm, I'm looking at the, the biggest one and counts per per those file names. And when I run that. I was a bit surprised because if you look at the results, uh, a.groovy <laughs> is a very common fine file name. Verify.groovy, config.groovy. So let me show you the, um, the, the table there. Uh, a.groovy, b.groovy, verify, or even a lower case as well. Uh, and I was a bit surprised, so I, I look a little bit closer, and sometimes, so Groovy is, is great for scripting as well. So you can just, you know, write some small scripts uh, here and there, and sometimes you need to obviously name those files, those script files, and if they don't really make sense, it seems that people just use letters. So, you know, I would have expected, you know, a test or a foo or bar or something like this. But it seems like, so there are dummy, there's dummy there. Uh, or test, uh, but it seems like A and uh, B are, are quite uh, frequently used. Uh, we're also seeing uh, classes from the Grails framework, like build config, data source, uh, uh, bootstrap, etc., which are or URL mappings or user groovy. Uh, most of these are coming from Grails projects. Uh, and things like verify config. Uh, invalid, uh, yeah, those ones. Uh, I've seen them quite often on 
uh, on some build pipelines, build tools, etc., where people make some assertions at the end of a build to ensure that the, the build went fine. So, but the A dot GUI was really surprising to me. All right, next uh, queries. Uh, no, where is where am I? Yes, gonna close that. All right, saved queries. The third one. So how many lines of code does that actually represent? Uh, so a little difference there compared to what I was doing. I'm actually looking at the contents, so the file contents, and then I'm splitting the contents of those files per lines, and then I can count over all those lines. And if I run the query, there are Oh, there are uh, how many? 16, 16 million lines of uh, Groovy code. But I thought that it wasn't very um, interesting because it's, I think it's more interesting to um, look at the number of uh, saved queries, the number of, uh, what, basically, what's the distribution? Uh, so are there big files, small files, etc.? So I, I used something else. So this is a, a triple nested uh, select. So I did pretty much the same as before, except that I group by uh, uh, I group by yeah by by ID. What's the ID? Uh, yeah, the, um, the 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 file ID, and then I used a function called quantiles, which allow you to group uh, by you know, quantiles, and I split into uh, 10 buckets. So if I run that, okay, so where's the result? It's there, hop, I'm gonna close that. So there are um, some, so how to uh, look at this, it's uh, like an histogram basically. So you've got those uh, 10 buckets uh, so if you say uh, when you're, you're in the middle, there's like uh, half of the files, 50% uh, of the files, which are small script files, like 37 lines of code, that's not much. But for example, you've got the upper bound here. So they are, or at least the, the maximum uh, number, so, so the, that's really the, in the top 10%, the, the biggest one. Uh, contains 9,000 lines uh, of code, which is, I think, a bit too much for a single class or a script. But otherwise, like the 90 percent uh, percentile, that's uh, below uh, 148 lines, so quite small classes of scripts. Um, all right, uh, what are, so what are, so how much, yeah, I don't have that much time, so I'm not gonna do all of them. There's this pop-up over there, so what are, uh, let me see, um, perhaps I can look at, yeah, so for those who know um, Groovy, we've got a power, powerful feature, which is the uh, uh, AST transformations, which allow you to, uh, implement certain patterns, etc., cetera, uh, or let the Groovy compiler implement certain patterns for you, certain uh, things. So uh, if you want to make a class immutable, you just use a, an add immutable uh, interface, uh, annotation on your class, and then it generates all the right equals and hash code or uh, uh, make private final fields, etc., on your class automatically. So here, uh, I'm still splitting the content of my files uh, with that split method. But then I'm gonna use a new function, regex extract, to look at the, uh, the, the, the class names in the imports, because I've been filtering on imports. You can write that differently. I could have put the import in the, uh, in the extract line as well. And then I'm using top that I used uh, also earlier to see what's the top 10, uh, the top 10 transformations. And as you can see, uh, compile static, that's uh, actually an annotation to tell the compiler, I want to statically compile uh, my Groovy code in order to have nice uh, you know, type inferencing, nice compiler errors. 
uh, and also make your code faster uh, compared to dynamic dispatch. But there are also things like toString to add automatic toString or equals a Nash code, uh, et cetera. So you can see uh, yeah, some more, like immutable, I was expecting it to be used a bit more. Uh, but that's uh, interesting, at least for me as a Groovy developer. Uh, what other interesting functions I could show you? Um, doo -doo -doo. So that's the AST transforms. Um, things like imports, uh, alias import, yeah, well, this one is pretty much the same. So I'm looking for ones with new functions that you've not seen. Uh, regex extract, we used it. Um, yeah, well, let, let's look at some other ones like the uh, things like Maven, uh, what are the most interesting ones? Okay, for example, which, uh, a similar, similar one to one I did uh, with the Groovy ones, like what are the most frequent uh, Gradle file names? Um, that was interesting as well um, to see how, so we, with Gradle you can uh, split, uh, the Gradle build tool, you can split um, your build file across several build files. So the, the most common one is build.gradle, but there's also settings Gradle to contain uh, particular settings for your project. But you can see things like um, release Gradle or push to Maven Central, uh, the um, all the uh, let's say or, or to bin tray, or there are some specific ones for things like publishing a new release, or I think there were yeah those ones I was looking for like quality dot gradle license dot gradle to check or check style Jacoco to do code coverage etc. So we see that it's a, a common concern for developers to separate things nicely into different gradle build files. Okay, um, so I think I've probably uh, used most of the uh, interesting functions. Uh, yeah, and there was a, you could also compare things like the number of uh, Maven build file versus uh, Gradle build files. So for example, if you use that, if you, if you look at uh, the Maven build files, at least the, the day I run the, the export and my data sets, so there were one million Maven build file versus uh, up versus uh, uh, this one. There were ta -da, uh, yeah, only a hundred thousand. Uh, Oh no, that's a settings. No, that's not this one. Sorry, that's the wrong query. Um, let's come back to this. How many Maven build files? How many Gradle build files? So one million versus, uh, let's say, close to uh, 500K. So Maven still seem to be. Uh, but actually, what's interesting is that Gradle is coaching up. It's like one third for uh, Gradle, two thirds for uh, Maven. Okay, but there weren't any uh, new interesting operators that I could show you there. Is there another one that I could show you? Uh, yeah, the distribution that's using quantiles. Um, yeah, count. Uh, database drivers, how would you do that? Yeah, because you, you have to look at what, what uh, dependency. So for example, I had, uh, so this one is it, yeah, in the Gradle build file. So for example, the compile dependencies, but then how do you, you know, you, do, you don't necessarily know that the dependency is a, is a driver or not, a database driver. Sorry, say it again. Uh, do I have that? Oh, that was, I did one. Let me see. <laughs> I missed it. I, I forget. I didn't rerun all of them because I, I knew I would, uh, I would not show all of them. Was it below? What was that? 
This one. Yeah. So, so this one, that's, oh yeah, of course, with, oops, uh, I went too far, 40. Yes, this one is the, um, oh, save query, 40. Let me reload it. Oops. Edit query. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, so it's in the context of Grails projects, uh, because I'm looking at, uh, the data source dot groovy files, which are it's a configuration file for Grails uh, web application. So if I run that, so this one uh, again, I'm using the I'm splitting per line. I'm using a regular expression matching, and uh, I'm using grouping, etc. So let's see that in action. It's running. It takes a bit longer. Oh, oh, null is interesting. Why is there a null driver? Perhaps there's something wrong in my in my query somehow, or this one is empty. So H2 uh, for testing, basically, locally. Uh, MySQL, Postgres, and oh, SQL Server. And not, not that many, uh, you know, SQL or Server or Oracle Server. So Postgres and MySQL seems to be the, the most frequent ones. All right, uh, did you see any other query uh, briefly that you would like to have a look at before wrapping up? So number of controllers. Um, yeah, there were some surprising results like in the, the number of, uh, of controllers, which was um, pretty big. Um, okay, let's switch back to the slides. I'm just gonna go through them rapidly. Groovy source files, the distribution. Uh, the imported packages, like uh, we use Spock a lot for testing. Um, the transformations, yeah, I, I showed that one. Yeah, the, uh, in GUI you can do import some class as another name. You can give another name to a class to avoid uh, class name clashes, but it's not used very much, like 0 0.4%. Uh, the traits. Uh, how many, the most frequent exceptions. Well, you can learn quite a lot of things. And um, so I hope I, I showed the, the power of the, the SQL queries, the capabilities you can, you can do. So I'm gonna wrap up here. So basically, um, so I use Groovy and Gradle and Grails because that's uh, my, my favorite uh, tools of trade. Uh, but it's your turn. So there are very interesting data sets which are available. Uh, you can also, as I said, make joins across different data sets. So sometimes you have to figure out what's the correct, correct way to join two data sets uh, because they don't necessarily use the same keys. Uh, but you can certainly learn lots of interesting things. Uh, there are, uh, so you can uh, programmatically push data to a uh, big query. So if you want to push all your logs or other interesting information into big query, you can do that. And then you can run your own analytics, etc. on top of that and do your, the usual data warehousing analysis. And then uh, for uh, reporting purpose, you can use integrations like Tableau, R, etc., to do more uh, statistical analysis and things like that. So some references, uh, I'll, I'll put the, the slides online if you want to uh, have a look at these ones. So the first links were about the, uh, the data set, the GitHub data sets. Uh, one of my colleagues did something pretty interesting. Uh, it was analyzing the, uh, you know, the famous uh, war uh, tabs versus uh, spaces. Uh, and he actually uh, looked at the source code to see what was there. Uh, I published a few blog posts on analyzing Groovy code, Gradle code, etc., Gradle build files, and some uh, more interesting analysis uh, made on GitHub. On another colleague of mine did analysis on the on the Go lang uh, source code. And spoiler, uh, spaces win, except for. Uh, C and Go, uh, which seems to favor tabs, but otherwise all the languages went with spaces. That's about it. Thanks a lot for your attention. Mm -hmm.